Hello, hello, Taming Cinematics Gains. This is episode 16, and I'm filming today because I don't know if I'm going to feel like filming on Saturday, and I'm off today. So, yes, I'm glad I took off today because I'm still recovering from being social. <laughs> I know if you met me at the yarn crawl, it may not have seemed like I'm an introvert, but it is literally taking me forever to get my energy level back up. Um, from being on. Um, so <laughs> it was lovely meeting all of you that stopped by. That was really cool. Um, I'm really, 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 really bad with names. And if you've watched me, then you know I'm forgetful. Um, but I'm, I remember faces. So if I met you during the yarn crawl and I saw you out somewhere, I would know that I've met you before, but I would not be able to remember your name. Um, what are those birds that remember people's faces? <laughs> I'm like one of those. Crows, they like crow, crows, ravens, both, I don't know. No, can we not, I don't want your chicken. Um, I boarded my dogs on Saturday while I was at the yarn crawl because I didn't want them chilling in the house by themselves. And then I didn't make it to pick them up in time. It was 15 minutes late. Um, stop. And uh, they had to spend the night. So they've been super clingy ever since I brought them home. I expect it from Vinny because I feel like every time he goes to the like vet hospital or anything for anything, he feels like he's being abandoned. <laughs> and I, you know, cause he's adopted and I'm not sure how long he was in a cage, but he always seems super clingy when he comes home. Like even if I just drop him off for the day to get a bath, he's just, I don't know. So he's been like following me everywhere I go. Um, since I brought him home. Theo's just like, hey, whatever, because he's used to like, I had Theo when I still worked in the office, and he's used to having to go to like daycare and stuff, so that's fine. Uh, but anyway, the yarn crawl went well. Um, I said in my last episode that if I did not sell half of my yarn, I would stop dying for other people and just keep dying for myself. And you guys bought over half of my yarn, so now I have to keep dying. Thanks, guys. <laughs> no, really, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. The support was pretty cool. I hope nothing is wrong with any of your yarn. I don't get any complaints about anything. <laughs> I think it's all. I think it's all fine. I think it's, it should all be fine. I tested everything for bleeding. I tried to make sure I didn't tangle anything, so it should all be okay. It should all be okay. Um, I am taking a break from dying for a couple of reasons. One, I'm out of yarn. <laughs> I have minis and sparkly. That, that's all I've got. Um, and honestly, ever since the yarn crawl, I've been getting ideas of things I want to dye and I'm going to start writing them down. I am going to start writing them down. I'm working on that after I film this because there's some other things I need to do. Um, no, back up, back up. Nope, nope. Um, sorry, dogs. And, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> dogs. Um, gonna start writing things down. Yes, yes. Okay, so one, I'm out of yarn and I need to order some yarn. Two, I still need you guys' input. So I'm still trying to figure out what bases people are into. I know what I'm into and I'm gonna keep dying what I'm into, but I don't wanna order a bunch of yarn that nobody's gonna want like that tweed yarn that I don't want. I took four, six, seven, eight skeins of that yarn with me to the yarn crawl. I sold three. And no, I take that back. I sold four, I sold four. So yes, I sold four. And two of them were half price. And I think that's the only reason anybody bought them. Just saying. Um, and, and for the 10 skeins of multicolored tweed that I had left in DK, I found another dyer that wanted it. So it's gone and I don't have to worry about it. It's not taking up space anymore. So I can replace it with something else. Um, yes. But anyway, <laughs> point being, I need to know what bases y'all like. Um, I am going to buy more 8515 because I like the feel of it and I want 
gonna dye it and I will eventually knit something with it I swear <laughs> and that sold quickly I only had well great I only had eight skeins of 8515 but they sold quickly um, I don't know if it was the colorway or if y'all like that base I'm thinking both um, so yes 8515 gonna happen um, and then the other two bases I had were 75 25 and 80 20 and you guys bought most of the 80 20 so I'm thinking y'all like 80 20 uh, somebody was telling me that uh, a lot of people prefer 80 20 for socks because it's fluffy is that is that true I mean I'm sure it's true but I mean is that true for you guys like do y'all prefer 80 20 like what what do y'all prefer I just, I just want to know it will let me know what samples to buy um, cause I like to buy like single skeins to dye and see if I like dyeing them. Um, like that alpaca story, which that will never happen again. Um, what was the other one? Knit picks, rustic wool, that will never happen again. Granted, I didn't sell that at the yarn crawl. I kept it. I'm going to do something with it. I dyed it in rainbow colors. I'm going to do something with it, but it's like a single ply. And I don't know what to do with single ply. A shawl maybe? I don't know cow I don't know anyway <laughs> point being tell me what you want tell me what you want um I was asked for DK and that is something I had planned to die at some point I just wasn't ready yet because I feel like with DK I definitely need to be able to dye sweater quantities because not everybody likes DK socks I do um <laughs> so I am gonna buy DK um I was asked for uh the rainbow connection sock set on DK that's going to happen. I was asked for more of Close Encounters. That's going to happen. I was asked for more of Within Cells Interlinked. I'm going to try to make that happen. Uh, I have all the dyes still, so I should be able to do that. Should. <laughs> They're all sitting, all the dyes that I used in it are still sitting on the table because um, I washed the pans and everything, but I haven't put all my dye stuff away. So. I'll try to do it again. It may not be exact, but the same colors will be in it. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's how the trunk show went. So that's all I got. So I sold some yarn, which means I'm going to keep dying. And I need to know what bases I should stock up on. Um, I'm still thinking of doing a Halloween advent. I've got a wrap my head around it. Um, if it takes too long, it might end up being a Christmas or holiday season advent. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do. Um, I did say that I would open an online shop to post the yarn that's remaining from the yarn crawl. I was working on that yesterday and I ran into a snag with some tax stuff. So I've got to get that taken care of because um, I want to make sure I'm doing everything right so it doesn't bite me in the bum at tax season because I apparently have to declare this as income which sucks because mm. and there's a tax thing about like if you're self-employed you have to pay this one tax that makes no sense to me because you have to pay as if like you have to pay what an employer would pay for like some stuff and I don't think that's fair because I am the employer of myself. So why do I have to pay extra taxes? I shouldn't have to pay what I would be paying somebody else. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's, it was a little hard to wrap my head around when I read it. So it's hard for me to explain it to you, but it's stupid and the government sucks. Um, <laughs> always trying to get something. Uh, but anyway, yes. <laughs> Let's get to the, the other stuff. Okay. I was gifted a hat pattern at the yarn crawl because someone came in with a hat that they had knit out of West 7th Wool yarn. Um, they knit it with the colorway Nevermore, which I have two skeins of. So I was tempted to use the same color, but I decided to use variegated. Um, but the pattern is called Swirly Whirl. I will put it here. And the designer was there and she heard me say I had never did a hat before and I really thought the pattern looked really cool. So she gifted me the pattern and I cast it on last night. So this is the Swirly Whirl hat. 
I am already halfway done. And it's just a spirally hat and I'm hoping it's going to be kind of like slouchy so I can fit all this craziness in there. Um, it's not as bad as if, if I didn't have a mohawk, my hair would be like taking up all the space. But I'm hoping this like lays like, you know, sits like this and kind of like slouches down a bit. I'm hoping that's what happens. And if that does happen, I think I want to knit another one in Candome. I like my oil slick colorways, y'all. Uh, but isn't this pretty? This is Madeline Tosh Spectrum. And I really like how it's working up. I might have to order some more because I only have one skein of this. So I might have to order some to use for some color work or maybe some socks. I'm hoping I have enough left to make some DK socks, but I probably won't. I might do a stripe. Ooh, a stripe, a stripe of this with Candome. Yes. Ooh, ooh, yes, that's happening. Okay, I need to finish this hat so I can start some stripey DK socks with Candome and Spectrum. Okay, okay. And then the colorway I posted about last time by Junk Yarn, uh, it was the Rhiannon colorway. That picture I posted was the colorway inspiration, which is why I was confused by the yarn that I got because it doesn't look like, you know, the grays and that purpley color that was in there. There's like more colors in this that were in the colorway inspiration. Anyway, so this is what that looks like. And now I know how zebra yarn knits up. <laughs> I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I actually like, you know, having a little bit of black interspersed throughout, but I think it would look cooler on a solid. Um, what I'm thinking of doing is using the red dye that I had success with and dyeing the sample skein that I have red and seeing how that looks and how that knits up, because then that could be my darkness colorway. <laughs> I still want to dye legend yarn. Oh, and I found out, I found out that, um, I was watching some stuff about Legend because I have like the super giant mega box set of Legend. It's massive. Um, <laughs> but I was watching that and I didn't realize that the actor that plays Meg is this dude. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, I, I found, I got a kick out of that. I swear I knew that at one point and it just, as things tend to do. Uh, okay, so those, those are my works in progress. And then I thought I would be finished with my farmhouse cardi by the time I filmed this episode, but one, I'm filming the episode a little bit early and this is all I've gotten done. So it's maybe double what it was when I showed it to you last time. And I'm supposed to have eight inches of this, I think, eight or seven. But anyway, this is taking forever. It's fine. I wanted to finish it by the yarn crawl, but honestly, I didn't really need a sweater. It was warm. Um, so yes. Okay. And then I have another work in progress that you guys have probably wondered what was going on with, maybe. My Cozy's Memory Blanket. Here's why I haven't worked on this. <laughs> I saw, and I can't remember who it was. I'll put it here if I find if I can find it. Um, but it was a designer and they were doing color work blocks, like color work squares. And then at the end, like it was a make along at some point. And then at the end, you join them all together and you have a blanket. And I freaking love that idea. Um, so I want to do a color work square blanket. And I've been trying to decide if I want to take apart my coziest memory blanket or just keep working on that, like use my Cozy's Memory Blanket for actual scraps. And the yarn that I, <laughs> I my scraps are half skeins usually, because I don't use a lot of yarn when I do my socks. So I'm thinking maybe I'll use that yarn to do color work squares, and then the scraps from that will go into the Cozy's Memory Blanket. So it'll be like two blankets going on at the same time. It's probably gonna take years to finish, but 
that's what I'm thinking and that's why I haven't touched this in a bit because I was trying to decide if I was going to frog it or not. But I made the decision yesterday that I am not going to frog it. I am going to keep working on it. Um, so yeah, that'll start getting worked on. And I think I'm going to do what K Crazy Sock Lady does where, you know, this whole scrappy Sunday thing. I think I'm going to start doing that so I actually get some work done on this. Um, so I'm going to work on this on Sundays. Okay. okay. That's the knitting, um, I think. Well, all right. I took this with me to the yarn crawl because it was just straight stuck in it. The swallow sweater that is never going to be finished. <laughs> and honestly, like that's literally how much I've gotten done since the last time y'all saw it. That's it. Um, and you know what it is, you guys? My hands hurt. Sorry. Um, yeah, if I knit on this for too long, my hands hurt. And I don't know why. I don't know why. Because I've knit fingering weight sweaters before, but something about this one's making my hands hurt. So I keep putting it down. Um, my hands don't hurt when I knit other stuff. I don't understand. I don't know. But that's why that's taking forever. So right now, I've just been taking it with me when I know I'm going to be sitting somewhere for a bit. So I took it with me for the yarn crawl. And like I mentioned last time, I took it with me in my doctor's office. So yeah, that's what's going on with that. Um, okay, so that's the, the works in progress. I have no finished objects. I am going to make some bags. Oh, that was another reason I'm taking a knitting, uh, dying break. I want to work on my fabric-y stuff. Um, yeah, I want to work on some things. I'm not going to stop, like, you know, I said I'm going to keep dying. I'm going to keep dying. And I've got plenty of ideas in my head right now that I can write down after this. Um, but yeah, I, I want to work on some other things for a little bit. Because I feel like, like with the yarn crawl, I felt like I needed to get all this dyeing done so I had enough yarn to bring to sell. Um, but now that I don't have to do that, I can go back to my regular process of just dying when inspiration hits. Um, and since I'm going to be doing that, then I have more time to work on other random things. So I'm not going to rush myself with dying more yarn anytime soon. Um, yes. Okay. So let's do acquisitions, regular acquisitions, and then I will show you yarn crawl acquisitions of which I have many. Which is why this is going to be a long episode. And this isn't, this isn't even everything. I have one more thing that I am buying from Yarn Crawl. Um, and I need to check my email to see if they've invoiced me yet. There was a bag uh, by Diana Couture, the person that made this bag. She has another bag and a fabric I really, 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 really liked. Um, and she had one on Etsy at one point and it sold out and I was very sad. But then I saw one at Quixotic Fibers when they did a little video of like her table at the yarn crawl. And I was like, oh, that's the bag, that's the fabric. I want that, I want that, I want that. And they said they set it aside for me and um, I'm just waiting for them to send me an invoice so they can mail it to me because I really don't want to drive all the way back out there. Um, Cause that's the yarn store that's the furthest away from me because it's in Whitesboro, Texas, um, which is north, north, north. I mean south. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, yeah. That's the only other thing I've bought from the yarn crawl that I don't have in my grubby little paws. Um, but I bought way more than I intended to. But I'm an impulse buyer, y'all. I can't help. I, I'm trying to get better. I really am trying to stop being an impulse buyer because... I've told you guys, like, I want to only buy yarn I have patterns for. Like, that is really my goal. <sighs> I'm not sticking to it, though. <laughs> With that said, I am another reason for the break in dying. There's so many. Um, I'm going to go back through my stash for, like, the 50th time and designate yarn for specific patterns. And whatever's left, I'm going to go through and see, I'm going to like, what's her name? I'm going to Marie Kondo it. I'm going to go like, does this bring me joy? So, I mean, it all brought me joy when I bought it, but I'm going to go back through because 
it's been a year since I've started collecting yarn. So I'm going to go back through and be like, okay, this was cool when I looked at it, but I'm ready to let it go. I can already think of a few skeins I know I'm probably not going to use. Um, I have some cotton yarn I know I'm not going to use. Unless I make towels. I'm just going to some towels. Anyway, rambling. Okay, so lots and lots and lots of things in the works. Uh, but anyway, let's acquisition. Acquisition. These are non-yarn crawl acquisitions. I mentioned last video that I bought more of the Malabrigo Sock Gradients. This is, is this Marine Lake? Yes, this is Marine Lake. I think it's pretty, it's pretty. And this is Amelie, and this is the one I really, really wanted. Um, but it does not look like I thought it picture I saw of this it was black on the outside and then it was like rainbowy looking in the middle and this is just blue in the middle I just think Malabrigo gets their colors confused sometimes because some of their colorways even though they're named different are very very similar um, but anyway whatever and I did there was was it some was it simply socks that knit up that yellow shawl or crocheted, I think it's crocheted, or something. But they made a shawl with the yellow one, which I can't remember the name of. And to me, it looks like popcorn. <laughs> it really does, it looks like popcorn. But in looking at it, they used one skein, I think, of it. And I was right, you have to use the whole skein to get the fade. So I'm thinking that because this one is pink and it fades to a blue, and then this one is blue. I can fade this like, cause this color is this color. So once I run out of this one, I'll start this one. And then my other skein is black and blue, which will go with this one. So, and there are, sh there are shawl patterns that use three. So I'm thinking of doing the Loveland shawl and just using these and just letting them do what they do. And the Loveland shawl, because it's crochet, it's Tunisian crochet, it uses more yarn than knitting and maybe I can get through all three of these. That's the thought. And then Simply Socks had Earth Yarns, but it's a mini sock kit. So instead of like a hundred skein, like a hundred gram skein, these are Earth trying to think when you buy the earth sock kits they separate them into two little skeins and I think they're 50 grams each I think I have one over there but I don't feel like grabbing it but this one is 30 grams each which is perfect for me um and I apologize for the crinkling where's the thing I hadn't opened this yet because I was waiting for podcast but they only had one color available on the Simply Socks website. So, yes, stripy socks. And if I were to knit two at a time, which I'm probably never gonna do, um, they're all separated and whatnot. It's cute. I was just stoked that they were small because then I would have less scraps after finishing a pair of socks. Okay, that is all my acquisitions that are not yarn crawl related. We're 20 minutes in. Let's see how long it takes me to get through the yarn crawl acquisitions. I feel like maybe I should take a break and have a snack. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my God, you guys. Let's see, should I go in the order that I shopped or should I just go by store? Let's go by store. You know what? I'm gonna go backwards. Because one of the things I bought first was super, well, pricey, well, pricey. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, okay, we'll go backwards. West 7th Wool, where my trunk show was. I shopped during my trunk show 
And I went back the next day because Hidden Door Fibers had their trunk show and I wanted to support. And I supported. <laughs> Let me just dump the bag out. Oh, okay. Here we go. There was a lady that came in um, and she was wearing this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous shirt. Uh, little knit shirt. I gotta find the pattern. I know I've seen it before. I know I've seen it before. But it was in this yarn. And I'm not a pink person, but it was pink and black and the way it worked up, it was so cute. This is Velvet by West Seventh Wool. It's beautiful, beautiful. So I bought a skein of that because I said I was gonna make some socks. But the more I think about her shirt, I kinda wanna make it for myself. But there's a whole other thing about that, which I will get into in a bit later. Maybe next episode I'll talk about it. Um, yeah, I'll talk about it next episode of why I'm not going to make certain things right now. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> what other West 7th Wool? I got a West 7th Wool Sock Blank Gradient in a green. Isn't that pretty? Uh, is it a colorway name on this one? Forest. This is the forest gradient. And they had a couple, they had them um, going in opposite directions, like the light on the outside going deeper in the bed, but I wanted the dark. Because of course I did. Um, yes. And it's funny because I told Amy, I was like, I'm going to buy a bunch of those. And she's like, you can dye these. And I was like, I know, but somebody else dyed it. I don't have to. Uh, so. I do need to get better about dyeing my own yarn instead of buying yarn because that makes more sense and it's more economical. This is Wood Nymph. It's like a grayish green. And I showed you guys the Fossil Frenzy tee. I'm thinking of using this green instead of the green from U2 Yarn. Um, this is a little bit darker and I think it works better for the color I'm trying to blend it into. Actually, did I bring it? Did I mention? Yeah. Ignore the orangey red, but this is what I'm going to use for the Fossil Frenzy tea. And I think this green will fade into it really well. But it's a mixture of like browns and greens and grays. I think it's going to look really pretty. Okay. No. Then I got. Malabrigo Nube, Nube, and Aguas. Oh, squishy. Oh, this is so soft. It's so soft. This is fiber. Hint, hint. Okay. <laughs> then I got another. So, however you say it, Zabra Ball, however you say it. Because I don't have this one and I like the colors. Because of course I do. This is Laundry Day. Knit purple. It's pretty. Gonna make some socks. And then this is another yarn that was recommended to me as a substitute for Spin Cycle. I didn't know that they carried it at West Seventh Little, but they do. This is Feederbrook Farm. And this is their Entropy DK. 260 yards. This is the colorway oxidation, which I thought was really pretty. And then that's what I bought during the yarn, like my day, my trunk show. And then I went back yesterday and got this stuff from Hidden Door Fibers. Actually, wait, hold on. I forgot these. I also bought these Bertie Parker earrings while I was there. They had some more dangly ones, which were more my taste, like diamond shaped ones, but I didn't like that they didn't match. I don't know, it's just weird. Like one was knit stitch and one was pearl and I wanted it to be the same. So I bought these instead. But aren't they cute? Okay, so, okay. Okay, so now Hidden Door Fibers Trunk Show. 
So I got Spriggan and Banshee. It's a legend colorway, y'all. They're, I think they're going to be my new dyer buddies. Um, we got to talking about movies and we share a lot of the same stuff. Like it's going to be fun. Um, yes. And they took that rainbow tweet off my hands. Oh, I'm so excited. This is Star League. And I was kind of tempted to buy this on DK, but I decided to buy it on sock weight because I want to make some socks and I think it would look really cool in the blanket I want to make with the color work. Um, then, pen. I think I bought a pen. Hang on y'all. I know I bought a pen. Where'd it go? bought a pen. Sorry, I didn't have a bag when I went yesterday, so I just kind of threw everything in one thing. I bought um, an enamel pen for hidden door fibers because it was super, super cute. Open. Very cute. There's a stitch marker. And they had like a little miniature claw machine where you could get stitch markers. I don't know where mine is. But it's a it's a little door. A little hidden door stitch marker. And they had bracelet weaving looms. It honestly, like when she showed it to me, it looked like my, um, I have a bead loom because I used to do bead jewelry. I have a whole bin of just random artsy projects I used to do. Um, but it's a bead loom. And so it's like a little miniature loom, basically. You can make bracelets and belts. Well, you probably have to like, I'm sure there's a way to do it. I've got to look at it and do all that stuff, but... I got the black sparkly one. It comes with a little pen thing, so you can. Anyway, so yes, I bought a little loom. It was cute. Couldn't help myself. Uh, impulse buyer. So I bought that, and then let's see. I'm going backwards. On the lamb yarn chop. And I have to give a shout out to Heather. Um, I felt a little guilty for doing my trunk show at West 7th Pool because honestly, Heather at On The Lamb Yarn Shop is the person that convinced me to dye more. Like when I first started dyeing, I would drop off like samples of my yarn for her to like tell me if it was okay or not. <laughs> so if I have another trunk show, I'll probably do it at on, on, on The Lamb because I should, um, but yeah. So yeah, you guys can thank Heather for me dyeing yarn. Because <laughs> so, I started dyeing it just for fun. And then, you know, she's the one that was like, you should dye more. People will like your yarn. And you all do. Thank you. Um, so yeah. I went there. There was a trunk show by the Backcountry Knitter. Which, if you remember, I got some yarn from the Backcountry Knitter because Tammy of Twisted... Not Twisted Stitches... Oh my god, my brain. Tammy of this podcast here um, had shown she had joined like a club for Backcountry Knitter and there was a Blood Falls yarn that I bought and I still have over there. But she had a trunk show and I got Serene. It is Twisted Stitches, isn't it? Brain. Maybe I should have taken a break and had lunch. <laughs> and then Charming You had a trunk show yesterday, and I got some of her yarn. This is Canyon. This is Busy Busy. Um, 
and Gemstone Galaxy. It was really pretty. But it was her first trunk show as well, so I thought I would support her too, because people supported me. Um, and then, Lone, Lone Star Farm Handcrafts did these stitch markers, or progress keepers. And what they are, and I ended up buying two sets because I'm greedy, um, it's reminders to what hook and needle size you're using. Can you see? It's got, it's got everything black. How do I not have anything black? Mm. Look at that. That works. So, it's got needle sizes on it. So I got a couple of these so I can put them on my projects because when I went to pick up my Cozy's Memory Blanket, I couldn't remember what needle size I was using. <laughs> so I had to play with a couple until I got my gauge back to what it was. Um, so yeah, I bought a couple of those. If I end up only really using one of these, then the other one will go in the giveaway, in the giveaway box. Um, oh, giveaways. Um, as a thank you for giving me the opportunity to do a trunk show um, at West 7th Wool, I gave Amy the extra uh, yarn bomber tote I had with the yarn on it and the yarn flash on the inside. So it has found a new home. Um, okay, so that was on the lamb. And the Kenny Knittery, because of course, and I felt bad because I really wanted to talk to um, the lady from Magpie Fibers was there, and I didn't get a chance to talk to her because a lot of the lady was talking to her, and she didn't seem like she was so enthusiastically talking to her that I didn't want to interrupt, and she was in there for a really long time. Like, I walked around the store and did some shopping, and she was still in there, so I was just like, all right, I'm not going to go in there. Although, I probably, maybe she needed a rescue. <laughs> Anyway, I did buy some Magpie Fibers yarn because, of course, I do. Uh, this is Smoke and Mirrors, which I just thought was gorgeous. Um, and I might put these together. This is Highline. Pretty, right? And then I got another skein of Geppetto, which I already have in stash because I need it for the oxidation shawl that I wanted to make. Uh, cause I needed two skeins of this because I wanted it to look like Jupiter. And I already have this, how do I put it? The red, the reddish orange that was on that swatch I just showed you guys a little bit ago. That's going to be for this. Um, so it's gonna, that's going to be my red spots. Um, for my Jupiter shawl. Because I think the original shawl is gray with red to represent copper because it was for the Arizona handcrafted book that I got, but I wanted, I wanted it to look like Jupiter. So that's for that. Oh, and I got some more magpie yarn. This is Aurora Borealis. They released this one right after that advent that I had, so I waited. And lo and behold, you know what it looks like? Can dome, but in cashmere. Um, I got some more less traveled yarn. This is Sinoita. And just like my other less traveled yarn, this is the Creosote collection. Don't come at me, y'all. I bought a skein and spin cycle. It's black and gray. It's black and gray. Okay. We'll just leave it at that. I don't know what to do with it. But it's going to go in something that's fingering weight. All right. <laughs> and then they had pins from Shelly Can. 
It's the evil beaver. It's got the double horns. That's so cute. I could not resist. And they gave me a free pattern. Which reminds me, West 7th Wool had a whole stack of free patterns and there was a shawl in there that had a bunch of triangles on it and I meant to grab it. I'll go back. I'm sure. Okay. So that was McKinney Knittery. Yarn and you. Bam. This is the, uh, the Luke, is it Luca? Luca? Copper needles. I thought they were only available in that set. So I was like, I'm never going to own them because I don't need that many needles. And I don't want the copper to do that whole patina thing. Like I want it to still look nice and coppery because I like copper things. Um, but I bought this in a size three because I said it would be my special needles to use on my scrappy blanket. And then I knit with it yesterday. It threw my gauge off. It's the exact same size as the Chiaogu, but it knit way smaller and I don't know why. I guess that's why they tell you to use the same needles when you start a project. I don't know. But anyway, I bought these. <laughs> and then I had to buy the cord for it. And no, don't like. Um, basically these swivel just like the mindful Cable swivel. Do I have any out? No, it's better put away. Um, so the mind, the Knitter's Pride Mindful, they swivel as well. Um, but just like the Mindfuls, these have memory, so it just mm, didn't like it. Um, can't wait for Xiaogu to release that Blackwood set with the swivel. Well, they're also releasing those cables separately that you know they swivel and they don't have memory like the regular Xiaogu cables. I'm waiting for those. Um, I think they said they'll come out in the summer or later in the fall. Maybe the, the cords come out in the summer and the needles, like the limited edition needles, come out in the fall. Somebody's got, I, I need those needles. But yeah, um, the copper's cool. I like the copper. And it says, like, if you don't want it to do that whole patina thing, you just make sure you, like, polish it like you would like normal copper stuff and I have a copper kitchen aid so I understand like do not leave water drops on it because it will get that stupid green tint to it but anyway they were only eight bucks it's eight bucks whole tangent sorry um then I got this sock yarn by Lang Yarns I just thought it was really pretty it knits up like that I'm like, where's the thing? It knits up like that, and I thought that was super cool. And it was only like, what, seven or eight bucks? I don't remember. I don't remember. It was cheap. Makes sacks. Uh, whoa. All right. And of course, I got some koi goo. Because every time I go to yarn in you, I have to get some koi goo. And I got, and you guys have seen this before, this is Madeline Tosh Whiskey Barrel. But I have it on DK and I decided to get it on Twist Light because I wanted a fingering weight. And I think that it will look good as the next color after the speckly color I'm gonna use for the Fossil Frenzy tea. And then I got more Madeline Tosh Twist Light. This is superb. That's the colorway name. <laughs> and I just thought, I just really like the colors. Socks. Um, then um, some of the yarn stores, I think three of them, had their own special colorways dyed by Madeline Tosh. So Juju. Juju Knits has their own special colorway. Uh, West Seventh Wool had their own. And then Yarn and You had their own. And this is the Yarn and You. And 
is called Hey. <laughs> so <laughs> pretty. They showed a couple samples of it where they knit it and they did the the whole like you knit the gray and then you get to um you get to the color and then you knit like a bobble. So like what's, what's it called? Assigned pooling. So they did that with this, which I thought was pretty. Um, and I said I was going to buy every store's special limited skein. And I did not pick up the one at West 7th Wool because I couldn't decide which base I wanted it on. But they had plenty of it, so I, I could probably go back for it. And when I went to Juju's, they were closed because um, I thought... The yarn crawl was every day at 10 o'clock, but apparently Sundays was 12 o'clock, and I don't know when I'm going to be back out there. I don't know. I might go back out there this weekend just to get that one skein, um, if they have any, because I know they were doing pre-orders of it, so I don't know if that meant that they weren't going to carry it like during the yarn crawl. I don't know. But I'm going to try to get a skein of it, because it was also a speckle. Um... Also a speckle. All right, so the West 7th one is a speckle. Um, it's a speckle with like, it's like a clay color with um, speckles of green and blue, which I thought was really pretty. Um, I just wasn't sure what I would use it for, which is why I couldn't decide what base I wanted to use with it. So yeah. And the Juju Knits one is uh, like a natural base with green and blue speckles. So anyway. I also bought a speckle yarn. I had never heard of this yarn before. It's Gusto Wool. And I'm guessing that's the name. Is that the colorway name? Maybe that's the colorway name. Nocta. Super speckly. And I got this because it looks very similar to a skein of Malabrigo sock that I have that has speckles and I think they would fade well. So this one's got more speckles. I don't know. And then I got this one because I thought it would make cool socks. This is Carmen. And then, where did I put the bag? I just set it down, nerds. And then I got a little DPN holder. Because I like the one I bought with the sheep on it from Jimmy Beans, but it's really big and this, this is shorter. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's yarn and you. And now, <laughs> this is the first place I went and where I spent most of my cash. Quick sided fibers. Life in the long grass. This is Hinoki. And I got some Dream in Color. This is Clockwork Heart. Isn't that gorgeous. Gorgeous. And this is Milky Spite. Isn't that pretty? And the most expensive thing I bought at the Yarn Crawl is in this box. Let's open it together, shall we? Stuff. Cords. Cords. Y'all know what it is now, right? <laughs> oh, look, there's more. Y'all have already figured this out, right? Cords. Why are there so many cords? Oh, do I have to put this together? <laughs> I guess I do. I can only assume this goes here. 
I don't know. We'll see what happens. This goes here, I think. Whatever. I bought a I bought an e-spinner, y'all. I'm gonna spin my own yarn. If you've watched my first, very, very first episode, one, it's terrible and long and drags and the picture quality is god awful. But if you've watched that episode, you know that I bought a drop spindle and I suck at it. In my head, I think that if I had something that was already spinning and I could just feed it, then I could create something. Because I'm just not coordinated enough to do the whole park and draft or just spin and I'm not that coordinated. Plus, dogs get in the way and whatnot. So, I bought this. <laughs> and I could have bought, like, they were out of the little one. But in my head, I wasn't looking to get the little one because I figured that was only for fingering weight yarn, maybe. I don't know. Um, but I wanted a normal size one because my goal is to do sport weight and maybe DK. It's my goal. Yeah. So when I go to Maryland Sheep and Wool, um, Aquila of Lefty Knitter Podcast had mentioned a company called Loop, which I've seen their yarn because they have it at McKinney Knittery, um, but I didn't know they had fiber. So, and she mentioned that like spinners like Loop's fiber because it drafts smoothly or something I don't know there was a whole thing watch her episode if you really want to know because <laughs> I'm learning um so uh, my goal is to pick up some fiber while I'm at Maryland Sheep and Wool to play with um I have some fiber to play I still have the fiber that I bought last year's yarn crawl to play with um and that crappy fiber I bought at uh, Hobby Lobby a while back I'm still trying not to shop at Hobby Lobby by the way um but yeah so <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot of money um <laughs> but you guys bought my yarn and it evens itself out so <laughs> it's like I didn't really spend that much although then I have to take into account like my actual buying of the supplies to dye with so it doesn't really cancel itself out but in my brain I'm gonna say it does and then Quixotic Fibers has spinner samples. So I bought a spinner sample. This is spinner sampler number two. They have two of them. One of them comes with locks, which we both, we all figured out, like, if I'm new to spinning, I'm not going to know what to do with that. So we decided that this kit would be the best. So. Deboule, deboule. I have a fiber book. I have the fiber source book. Right, what, what's it called? Andrew Mowry mentioned it once, so I went out and bought it because I'm like, yeah, it's good to have just so I can research. Like, don't want to be a yarn dyer that knows nothing at all about fiber. Have I read the book? No. Dibule, wool, silver. Oh, this is soft. Put that in there. Rambouille comb top. What's the difference? Well, they're different sheep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on. This one's softer. Marathon Basin Wool, Texas. 20 grams. This one's comb top natural. This one's softer. Dibouille, Dibouille. Black Jacob Roving. It's not really black, but okay. That's my other goal for Maryland Sheep and Wool. I'm gonna try to find like natural black yarn. Like not dye, just straight up black. White Kent Romney from Paradise Fibers. Y'all are probably like, it all looks the same. You people at Spin might know what I'm looking at. <laughs> Perindale Roving. Oh, 
maybe I should join that club, but Chemnitz, Chemnitz has a Paradise Fiber, like, fiber club. Oatmeal, Blue Face Lester, Paradise Fibers. Ooh. Oh, I like that. I like that color. They smell all sheepy. <laughs> Finn, Paradise Fibers. Is that a type of sheep? Is there a type of sheep named Finn? I should read my fiber source book, huh? Oh, look at this color. Look at this color. That's oh, a sort. Um, Morit Shetland Roving. Morit. Morit. Oh, it's another pretty tannish color. The other one's softer. To try not to mix these up so I know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm gonna have to do a spinning notebook. Chevois, Chevois, Chevois. I don't know, y'all know. There's also Paradise Fibers. Okay, a lot of these feel the same to me. But that one is, what is it? This double A one is the softest. So soft. <laughs> I'm excited. So, okay. Here's my reasoning. The drop spindle, affordable, portable, um, but I not coordinated enough to do it. This spinning wheel, uh, one of the ladies I was talking to at the crawl was mentioning to me that it fits inside of a cooler lunch bag. So it's also portable and cheaper than a spinning wheel. Cause I thought about like when I go to Maryland Sheep and Wool, like checking out wheels and maybe like splurging on one of those. But what if I don't like spinning? So, I got this electric wheel, and again, the smaller one was cheaper, yes, but for the yarn I wanted to spin, I figured this would be a good size. Um, so if I end up not liking this, I feel like this is something that is easily resellable, um, whereas a spinning wheel that is like hundreds and hundreds of dollars or maybe even thousands. I saw one the other day. It was like $1,900. Um, you go buy a used car for that. Um, <laughs> but I figured this would be a good starter investment for me um, since the drop spindle just wasn't doing it for me. And if I don't like it, this is easily more easily resellable than a super expensive wheel would be um, if I went that route. Also, it was less of a hit to my budget after buying yarn during the yarn crawl and getting ready to travel in a week um so it's just cheapish and they're always out of stock <laughs> so i figured while they had them in stock it was a good time to pick it up so i did and yeah so that's gonna be a thing which is another reason i'm taking a short break from dying because i want to play with my new toys so yes that, that's that's the yarn crawl stuff, y'all. Um, and like I said, there's one more thing that isn't here, um, which is also at Quixotic Fibers, was a bag with a bunny on it um, that I bought for the yarn crawl, or I'm going to buy as soon as they invoice me. And that's all I got. And I was going to shop some more, but I decided I should stop because of Maryland Sheep and Wool. I'm going to want to have some spending money when I go there, too. And... I'm also gonna maybe drive to Virginia and say hello to some peeps um, if I have the energy for it. So I don't wanna spend too much money on stuff that I can buy almost any time. Cause I mostly wanted to buy stuff from people um, that were doing trunk shows like indie dyers like myself and you know, pick up a few things like Life in the Long Grass cause I have to drive all the way out there to get it. Um, yeah, I didn't want to buy too much of stuff that I knew I had ready ready access to. I wanted to buy more indie stuff, and yeah, I bought more than I intended to. I did. 
Um, I really did. <laughs> I said that for the yarn crawl, I was just going to go to trunk shows and I was going to buy some life in the long grass. Didn't say I was going to buy Dream in Color and all this other stuff. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I did primarily buy trunk show stuff. Yeah. 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 Trying to convince myself that's what I did. <laughs> Probably not what I did. Anyway, that's everything I got at the yarn crawl. Um, it goes on through the weekend, this coming weekend, so I think May 1st. Um, so I could potentially go out and buy more, but I'm not going to, which is why I'm doing this video now to kind of hold myself accountable. I'm not going to. Well, hmm. The Madeline Tosh one of a kind thing is next weekend. Okay. Other than that, <laughs> I might go back out for the Madeline Tosh one of a kind. Cause I've knit with like, all right. So last year I got a bunch of yarn from the Madeline Tosh one of a kind. And I've knit with all of that this year, like this within this past year. So I know I'll use it. Okay, I might buy a little bit more. But then that's it, because Marilyn Sheep and Wolf. And yes, I need to get ready for that. I need to figure out what I'm gonna take, what bag. Because uh, I wanna travel with just one bag, so like a backpack or something, because I'm just going for the weekend. But I also wanna have some room <laughs> in case I wanna bring some stuff. So should I take like a, like a big carry-on or like a straight up suitcase? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should take a suitcase. But if I don't take a suitcase, then I will limit myself by what will fit in my bag. Right? Right. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's all I got. It's been an hour. Um, I thought it, honestly, I thought it would be longer than that. So I'm, I'm proud of myself for keeping it to an hour. But um, I'm hungry. And it's about to rain again, which means my head's going to explode some more. So I'm going to go eat. And I will talk to you guys. Marilyn Sheep and Wool. Maybe I'll, I'll try to I'll try to film some clips of Marilyn Sheep and Will while I'm there, and then I'll film an episode when I get back. Um, so one, two, three, three weeks. Okay, so it's gonna be a little bit for the next episode. So you'll live. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Happy knitting, you guys. <laughs> Bye.